If you're just stepping into the world of stargazing and wondering how to make the most of this fascinating hobby, then you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the most essential tips to ensure the best stargazing experiences, not just the first time you go out, but every single time thereafter, and in ways you've never imagined. These are the things that I wish I had known when I got started with the hobby and have acquired over years of experience. And as there are always things to learn when stargazing, there's even a few in here you may not know already, even if you have a lot of previous stargazing experience. So ultimately, these will elevate your stargazing game. So without further ado, let's dive in. For all of your astronomy equipment together in one place, as you can see here, I've got a box. I'm currently storing it in my garage, but you may want to put this in a loft or just somewhere out of the way. But you can also easily access because you want to be able to pick, pick up your astronomy equipment very, very quickly, know exactly where it's all kept as well. Another little extra tip for you, as you can see, I've actually kept all of the packaging that the equipment comes in. Various reasons for this. The first is really, really easy to identify the different equipment I have. So as an example, here's my 12 by 60 binoculars. Here are my 15 by 70. And here is the box I kept for the uh, 20 by 80. So, I, so it's really easy to identify what piece of equipment is, first and foremost. Secondly, I've got the outer boxes as well for storage if I do want to put them away, and also just to better protect them. So I keep literally all of the packaging that comes as well. Um, and I could probably be a little bit more organized here, but this is really accessible for me. I can come and get it whenever I want, uh, and I can quickly get out to get some views of the, of, the, of the stars and just any other celestial body. So that's a really good tip. I'd strongly recommend just having it really accessible and really easy to get to. The next tip follows on really, and this one is all about uh, ensuring that you have, say, a bag that you can just put everything in. It's really good to get a bag that's kind of compartmentalized so you can put things in certain places. So as an example, this Celestron bag, this is what you get with the uh, travel scope. And what I really like about it is it's got various different compartments you can put the different components in. So whether it's the um, tripod, whether it's the, you can put filters in, or the eyepieces in different sections. You get the idea. So I'd really look for a, it doesn't have to be Celestron branded or any astronomy uh, manufacturer brand, but just look for a bag that you can put different parts in and just make sure you put them back. And then that way, every time you go stargazing, you know exactly where they are, you keep them safe and you don't spend all your time wondering what you did with them as well. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, as you can see, I actually keep this packaging as well, just for the uh, actual scope itself. Again, keep any packaging you can, just keep it nice and protected. It's very easy to put back in this. Um, it all comes included. So yeah, just, just really good little tips that will ensure that all your equipment is protected. This tip may or may not be possible depending on how much space you have and the equipment that you're using. But another good tip is to basically keep all of your equipment set up. So for the Celestron travel scope as an example, it probably takes between five and 10 minutes to set up from scratch, which isn't an issue, but it can get a little bit boring, a little bit repetitive. And you've got all these little pieces you need to keep hold of as well, as an example, these. So it's just a really good idea if you can to have it kind of pre-set up so that when you want to stargaze, you're right ready to go and you don't have to faff around setting everything up. So here's an example of uh, my travel scope, but I've also got some binoculars on a tripod that I like to store away as well. So that's another quick tip I'd recommend. Now this tip is a little bit boring, but it is really, really important. I've actually got a lot of value out of it. Look for or actually read or even access the instruction manual that comes with your equipment. Alternatively, you should be able to find this as a PDF online. Sometimes if you just search for uh, the brand uh, of your telescope and the model and then put kind of instruction manual PDF, you should be able to find it. But these are actually full of so much good information. So not only is there assembly instructions, but you've also got bits on kind of the telescope basics as an example for this particular model. You've also got astronomy basics and even recommendations for observing, looking after your telescope, etc. So these are actually full of really, really good information. And I'd strongly recommend just a quick, at least a browse through just to so you really understand your equipment and you're ready before you even go out um, to start using your telescope or binoculars. So you should get these with binoculars as well. Now it's really, really important. You don't just want to head to a field or, or your observing location and not know exactly how to get started. You'll spend so much time, it'll get really frustrating. And, and those kind of experiences really put a downer on stargazing. And if you do that too often, you, you may even kind of get bored or fed up with the hobby before you even get started. So this one is a little bit boring, but it's strongly recommended. 
So here's a final tip before we head out, make sure you dress appropriately. Now chances are if you're stargazing it's going to be in the depths of winter, it's going to be really cold, it's going to get bitter and if you get too cold it's just not enjoyable. So here you can see my really really warm coat, I'd recommend a thick coat uh, with great protection from the elements, also recommend some kind of thermal underlayers, um, just multiple layers as well, really really important, make sure you can even wear multiple socks, just anything that keeps you warm. Uh, you want to be very, very comfortable because it just makes the whole experience much more enjoyable. Next up, I recommend that you invest in a range of equipment. And if you're on a tight budget, just make sure that you get something that's just going to suit your stargazing needs. So as you can see here, I've got a pair of binoculars on uh, a tripod, but I've also got a travel scope. And I use these at different times for different use cases. But when you're stargazing, binoculars are just fantastic. You can get so many different models. Um, with different spec and they're really really affordable they're so versatile you can take them with you on the go they're great to pack in a bag and you can also just kind of point and shoot there's no kind of complicated setup uh, like there is with uh, a telescope well if you've got a tripod there is a little bit of a setup but it's not too difficult at all i've got a video on this channel if you did want to check that out and i'll drop that in the description if you did want to watch it um, but yeah binoculars are absolutely fantastic um, i'd strongly recommend a range of equipment Perhaps start on the lower price. If you're on a budget or a beginner, start with a cheaper pair. I think these are 12 by 60s. That's right. But I've also got a pair of 20 by 80s. They require a tripod. They're really, really heavy and not so versatile. So that's another consideration as well. Just consider the spec, um, but also consider what that brings. So as an example, bigger binoculars, heavier, bulkier, more difficult to take with you on the go, and you're going to need a tripod. Whereas these uh, are also good for terrestrial viewing. Uh, and also they're just, as you can see, very small, very portable and very comfortable. So yeah, that's what I'd recommend as an extra tip is just look at your um, desires for stargazing and consider the equipment that is available to you. So one other thing I'd strongly recommend is that you learn the basics of astronomy. You want to understand the fundamentals of the night sky. So before heading out, familiarise yourself with the basic astronomy concepts. You want to ensure that you learn about the different types of celestial bodies, how the sky changes with the seasons and the movement of the stars and planets. This knowledge will not only enhance your stargazing experiences, but they will also make it more meaningful and engaging. I would also recommend that you keep an eye out for special astronomical events. Meteor showers, lunar eclipses, planetary alignments and comets provide spectacular viewing opportunities but they don't come around too often. So check an astronomical calendar and plan your stargazing around these events for unforgettable experiences. Remember, some events are very rare, so catching them can be a once in a lifetime opportunity. So now I want to give you some tips when it comes to actually going out stargazing. Now this may seem a little bizarre, I'm filming my patio, but this is really important. So you need to choose the perfect spot. So as you can see here, this is a flat surface. And as you can see from my backyard or garden, if you're in the UK, this isn't the best place to stargaze. I've got a lot of trees in the way. There's also a lot of houses, so there's a lot of light pollution. So you really want to ensure that you're choosing a location that perhaps gives you a flat surface or is really, really comfortable and also isn't going to impact your viewing. So perhaps you need to consider your backyard, maybe look for local parks, ideally a spot in the countryside. You really want to find a darker and quieter area when it comes to stargazing. This isn't the best. I do it every now and again because we do. I do get some, uh, on, on the odd night, I do get some good views. I do have to mine these trees. But as I say, make sure you can find a local location or perhaps an area of your property that just gives you the best chance of success. As an example, here is a local park that I like to come down to. As you can see, it's really, really open. And what I absolutely love about this park and what I'd recommend that you try to look for in local areas is there's a real lack of light pollution here. So there's hardly any houses. So it's really, really good. Get very, very good views of the sky. Lack of trees as well. So as you can see, it's nice and open. And I like to come down here in the morning and also the evening as well. Uh, and what's great about this place is that it's hardly any dogs or just anyone else. So it's really quiet. My next tip is to consider timing. Now, timing is so, so important. You want to stargaze during the right phases and the right seasons. So autumn, winter and spring are prime for longer, clearer nights. It's kind of useful to avoid full moon nights as its brightness can overpower uh, other celestial bodies as well. So yeah, it's really, really important that you go out on certain nights. So that might be the morning for you. It might be 
uh, the evening it may be a combination of the two find what works for your schedule also do check weather apps and make sure that your skies are going to be clear if there's obviously a lot of rain forecasted then you may find that your views are just going to be so limited it's not worth your time also if it rains your equipment could get um, damaged a lot of these are kind of waterproof and things like that a lot of this equipment is waterproof fog proof etc cheaper uh, equipment doesn't tend to be so you do need, do need to t take that into consideration as well uh, but yeah you want to protect your equipment it's probably not best to go out in the rain next up i would recommend documenting your observations so here you can see a hardback notebook and i strongly recommend that it is hardback because when you're out uh, stargazing you want something that's going to be easy to write on and give you a little bit of added support note down what you see the date the time the location this not only tracks your progress, but it also helps you understand patterns in the sky over time. So as an example, you will know for next year when to head out and what you can expect to see, assuming that the conditions are pretty much the same. You want to ensure that you adapt to the dark before you stargaze. So allow your eyes to adjust. Um, this process, known as dark adap adaptation, can take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. So you want to avoid phone screens as that light will just disrupt your vision. And if necessary, use a red flashlight, which is less intrusive to uh, other flashlights when you are out stargazing. So yeah, make sure you are adapted to the dark and that will ensure that you can kind of see as best as you can. Also make sure that if you're wearing contact lenses, you put them in later in the day rather than at the start. You don't want your eyes to be tired. If you're using glasses, make sure they are clean and that your eye relief of your binoculars, as an example, is adequate and that the eye cups are in a good position for you to view. Now this tip applies to binoculars if you're using them for stargazing. You always want to start with your naked eyes first before you move on to your binoculars. You want to familiarise yourself with the night sky first. You want to identify anchor objects, say the Big Dipper or the North Star, and then gradually move to binoculars when you are ready to do so. That will enable you to have the closer look. It's just much more effective, it's much easier than something that I strongly recommend. So I've just jumped on my computer just to offer you some tips going forward. So there's three tips here which have really, really helped me and have just made the hobby so much more enjoyable. So the first one is to join astronomy groups. So you can find these by simply Googling astronomy groups and it will bring up um, groups that are near, near you. You can put astronomy groups near me as an example. That's a search you could run and it will just show you all of the societies and groups in your area. There's also great websites out there that just show the clubs by county or town, city, state, etc. So just find out uh, local groups. It's really good to find other astronomers, um, talk to them and also just you know, build that sense of community. You can learn so much from other people. It makes it so much more exciting. You might even be able to go out stargazing with them uh, if you have been doing it alone. Um, it's something that I really, really enjoy doing. This is a this is a hobby that it's hard to find perhaps sometimes other people who are also into it. So I'd recommend connecting with local astronomy clubs and organisations. You can also learn so much from them. There could be equipment you can borrow. There's just a community of fellow stargazers there. Um, planetariums, observatories and even libraries can be great resources for these too. Now the next tip is to look for and join different astronomy forums. So again, a simple Google search will bring up uh, the main ones. I am part of Stargazers Lounge and Cloudy Nights myself. These are two fantastic forums I'd really recommend that you uh, visit, sign up for. There's so many different things on here, whether it's equipment, advice, just general chit chats, or whether you're just looking for uh, star parties as an, ex as an example there. Um, yeah, there's a good announcements on what's to come, what you could hope to observe and, and when. So yeah, I'd recommend signing up to these if you haven't already. And then lastly, don't forget social media. Make sure you sign up or join some of these groups. So as an example, type in Astronomy Facebook or even if you're in Facebook directly, you can just search for Astronomy Groups um, and just join them because so many people, um, and it's not, not just Facebook, Instagram is another great one because it's very visual, Twitter. But these are all great for connecting with fellow astronomy enthusiasts as well, sharing your observations, photos, experiences, engaging with others as well. Um, you know, with these kind of social media groups, you're less likely uh, to kind of meet up. Chances are you're going to be in different parts of the country or the world, but still um, there you can make some great connections there. 
great new insights, inspiration. Uh, and there's also collaborative stargazing projects as well in some of these places. So I strongly recommend uh, joining these. They Hopefully they're free as well. Most of these are free. Uh, plus the positive feedback and encouragement from the community can be motivating as well. So there you have it. Several of my favorite and recommended tips for stellar stargazing experiences. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below and I'll get back to you. Do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, there's lots of videos like this coming out. And I've got so many other videos on um, astronomy equipment, uh, tutorials on how to set them up, what you can see with them, etc. And so much more content to come. So I really would recommend being part of this channel. Uh, other than that, uh, all the best with your stargazing. And remember, the sky is the limit.